just to stand with us for some questions. Yes, please. Okay. So a question for offer. Yeah. Do you think there's a use for uh, hydrogen, uh, hydrogen peroxide uh, in the prevention of cotibacterial acne uh, infection? And besides that, do you think there's a role for negative pressure wound therapy also in the prevention and treatment of these kind of infections? I mean, you are great. Your questions are superb. <laughs> yes, I, I, I... Not in primary, but uh, when I do a revision, I use peroxide. When I wash out, I use peroxide as well. I don't know if it helps or not, but I, I believe it helps because, you know, it causes something. Uh, so, yes, you have to do whatever you can to try to, to not to, uh, to, to avoid further infection. And uh, regarding the suction, one trick that I do, I, I never uh, use drains in my primary or any operations. What I do is I leave the suction, when I close the deltoid, I leave the suction under the deltoid until I close everything. So I reduce the dead space. I reduce the dead space. I have no, when I take it out, actually everything is collapsed. Because you have a tamponade. If you, if, you, if you close everything and you keep the suction and close everything, you have a tamponade. So it will... At a certain point, the bleeding will stop, so you have less blood in this big dead space that you have, so you have less dead space. It's a good idea. I, I didn't have time to tell it in my uh, real life, but that's an important thing to Can do. Can I ask just one more thing? Yes, of course. When you do the beads, do you yeah. change the dose of your uh, IV antibiotics? No. Uh, first of all, I give IV only perioperative, so one dose or two doses, not more than that. And I, the rest, if the patient doesn't have any problem with his gut, he gets orally straight away. There's no, if it's good absorption, he doesn't have to have it IV. I know it's different from what other people think, but I, our microbiologists very, feel, feel very strong about it. So, uh, but it's important to give the double drug, because you need the rifampicin to go through the micro, microfilm. May I add something? The biofilm. May I add yeah. something? About these beads, I uh, use these beads too, and the problem is that these are producing quite a lot of fuel, uh, fuel, af fuel after the fluid, sorry, after the, uh, the operation. So for the first week, you will see that the uh, wound is draining quite a lot. This is frightening. That's, that's a good point. You, you shouldn't put a big chunk of them just under the skin. You have to spread them between the tissues and just a little bit yeah, that's under what the skin. Because if yeah. you, put, you put a big chunk of them, that might happen. That no, it drain happens out. Always. Not yeah, always. I do always. the same thing as you do. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Tom. Just a remark. Um, Cute bacteria acne is a serious problem. Uh, but I don't think we really know enough about it so far. Uh, you're probably aware of the uh, uh, paper where they uh, also cultured sterile swabs as a control uh, for the, the swabs they took from the patient and there was a considerable number of positive swabs also in the sterile, uh, culture from the sterile swabs. So, so cutobacterium acne is a very strange bacteria and uh, probably extended culturing in the lab creates false positive results. So that's one thing. The other thing is that cutobacterium acne is not cutobacterium acne. There are different strands Correct. and they have different pathology. So I think we should be aware of the, the, that this is uh, a lot of knowledge to gain still. We, correct, everything you said is correct, uh, but um, that's why we were very strict. We uh, took at least five to seven specimens, and more than 50% of them had to be positive in order to be positive. That's one thing. About the strands, you're right, and we are running now uh, an international uh, multi-center study in Europe, supported by SECEC. Uh, Robert Hudek is the, the chief investigator, Carlos Torrens, myself, there's a few others. I mean, we are quite a big number in, in Europe. I will regard myself as European yet, yeah, still, yeah. In Europe, <laughs> we're doing uh, this multi-center multi study from revisions to find which subtype of P. acnes is the one that culprit for the infection. Mm. And I'm sure that we, there's so much more to learn about it. Uh, and we're just scra scraping the surface, yeah. 
That's very interesting, yes. So, any comments from the other uh, gentleman, Dr. Ferrucis, uh, Dr. Mafal, about that? I have a comment. Yeah. <laughs> it's great presentations for <laughs> both of you. But again, you can prevent everything by using a stemless implant. <laughs> <laughs> also, no, no, uh? also glenoid loosening. No, yes. yeah, that was, I was about yes. to say, or rupture of the calf. <laughs> right. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let me ask you, to each one of you, which kind of washing do you use during your routine um, reverse or total shoulder arthroplasty? Well, I just use, um, I do a double prep. Um, there's some, in, there's one obscure paper somewhere, I think in the total knee literature, where if you double prepped with beta-9 and then chlorhexidine, the infection rate was lower. So that's what I do. But I don't use any peroxides or anything but fancy. On the skin and inside when you washed? No. Nothing. You mean, you mean washing in the, in the in inside. during the operation? Oh, inside. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, you know, um, the United States uh, they actually made it. Um, I mean, it's like not illegal, but it's not the standard. Or, and I think some regulatory agency made everybody stop. So um, we don't use anything. You can only use saline. Yeah. With pressure or just? Just squirt. Okay. Saline the same. With pressure or? No, just no, just like. Offer? And sometimes, sorry, diluted better than sometimes. Okay. I use saline, and whether with pressure or not depends which hospital. The private one, yes, with pressure. <laughs> the NHS <energy is> without <laughs> pressure. That's good. Don't ask me why. <laughs> Does anybody use something else here? So I prep with peroxide. Okay. Usually it takes me, unless it's a revision arthroplasty, everything takes me about an hour. Okay. So, if you use, uh, so if you use hydrogen peroxide, it'll kill C acnes for about one hour. So if, we, if it extends past an hour from whatever I'm doing, then we'll wash with peroxide again, dilute betadine, and then saline. And so I, I think C acne is a very serious problem. Yeah. And so we changed our prep, I don't know, four or five years ago, whenever the, uh, they, when Alex just started the, the PJI task force. Uh, and so we changed that. We found that it killed it for an hour. So we do that. And then the nurse in the room watches the clock. If it gets to 60 minutes and we're not closing, then we'll wash it with peroxide again. Inside. So both outside. So the outside prep is sort of like what Ed said. It's, it's uh, peroxide, alcohol, chloro prep, and then we do a second chlorhexidine prep. Uh, after we drape, we change gloves. And we open the yeah. shoulder. If we're going to irrigate inside, we do peroxide. If it's past an hour, then we do peroxide and then dilute beta down. If it's not past an hour, then it's saline wash. And then I went back to using a drain. So yeah. I, I do do a drain. I know you don't, but I'm not using. Uh, but I don't, I, like, I don't you, like hematomas you know, uh, at all. I, ch I don't have any hematomas. Yeah, I know you don't, but I don't use stemless on the hemorrhoid uh, side. Yeah, so clearly I have hematomas. Correct. That's right. Soon it will be available. Those yeah. big, stems, big stems uh, bleed more. So I think it's really interesting that, uh, that uh, and you can probably comment on this, is that uh, it's sort of it's the standard of care in the States is a two-stage revision. And, um, and if you, you know, I can't comment on the medical legal side of it because every case is different, but by and large, the mentality in the state is, states is you should do everything possible to make sure there's not an infection. So if you're going to replant somebody and then they get infected, like you do a one stage, and they get infected and have to have a more operation, I don't, can't say that that's considered malpractice, but it's considered poor form, yeah. and uh, at least. And probably, you know, I think in some instances, there would be litigation involved. And so it's interesting to me that uh, despite uh, what the single stage data seems to show that uh, uh, over across the pond there, the standard of care is a two stage. And I think part of the issue, the biggest issue I think for me is that everything, or not everything, but almost every revision, no matter how, what sort of soup you throw in there, uh, will grow one colony of P. agnes in broth. And, or C. acnes in broth, or maybe two colonies, or whatever. And even in that situation, it's con the risk-benefit ratio of not treating it is considered too high to not treat it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so maybe it's fear, maybe it's fear of litigation, or maybe it's fear of having to operate on the patient again. 
I think the standard in the United but States is a two-stage mm -hmm. revision. And, and, it, and what's interesting to me is, you know, this 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 sort of the systematic reviews for the past the States. for the He's past the ten States. years have shown the same thing. Well, I did one too, and I was yeah. a co-author, but yeah. you know, the data is the data, you yeah. know. So, but but I, I actually didn't read it. But I think again, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Of course, but. <laughs> but I think that um, again, uh, that's not a problem because, for me. Even if it grows nothing, and I think, suspect that it's infected, it's infected. You know, the fact that we didn't grow anything doesn't mean. So I treat it Harder. the same as I will treat infected with C. Acnes. So I will do, I use the beads, I'll give antibiotics for at least four weeks, check the patient, see how it goes. And but then if I need, I pr <coughs> continue with antibiotics. But even further. something uh, oral versus IV, yeah. you know, the trouble in, in uh, and you were talking about the way you do the skin and everything. The trouble is ever getting enough data, I mean, enough numbers to actually get statistical significance so Correct. that you can actually make real, uh, real, real uh, comments yeah. or conclusions. But I mean, most of it's sort of voodoo, you know, like you've got your voodoo, he's got his voodoo. I've got mine. You probably have yours. But, but and uh, it's all so until. And I think I think it's going to take because the numbers are so small for most of we us. We need to do probably. Take, we need exactly. to collect all our data together, exactly. maybe, and do exactly. it together. Uh, that, may I make a exactly. comment that as a young, the one and two stages. Yeah. The difference is, uh, it's true that the results of the two stage procedure are worse than the one stage procedure, but the infection rate is the same. The no. results are worse. Well. It, this That's study, this, um, you know, I wanted, to say, shows, I wanted yeah. to say that the results are worse because of the function. And this lot, it's, it's something that can be explained yeah. if you go to ICE for the, for the vision. But as far as I know, I was checking that recently, the great majority of the literature show that there is no difference in the infection rate. N I mean, I, I, w one thing that I, you know, I think it's, it's, uh, it's important to say, I mean, obviously like some of us that are centers that collect infections from all over, I, I've got quite uh, a large, you know, revision from other places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and to be honest, if I try to remember how many of these one single stage I did, I have to go back and do a two stage. There's one of them I, I showed you now, and another one I can show you that's, uh, 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 that I had to, so I tried to do a dare to, pre to preserve everything, just change the, and wash and all that, and it failed. And maybe it failed because it was too late okay. to do it, and these two I had to do at two stage. Okay. Professor Yerugolis, another question? I have a question. You said that when you suspect Sorry. an infection, finally, there is an infection. That means that, that means that you have an experience in infections, and there is accumulation of signs or criteria that lead you to, to suspect an infection. What is this? It's very simple. You have painful, stiff shoulder. Painful, stiff, stiff shoulder. Pain. You look at the x-rays. You have loosening, aseptic, aseptic loosening. You mm -hmm. don't have any CRP, ESR, and all that. It's, for me, until proven otherwise, it's infected. Well, Without CRP, with CRP a, will be normal with CACNIS. It will okay. be normal in, in most of the cases. ESR will be normal. Okay. So everything will be normal. So for me, painful, stiff shoulder. And loosening? And even it's without loosening. But if there's loosening, it's infected. Infinity. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask And, and I tell you that the majority of cases that I suspected that will be infected, yeah. when we took the specimens, from, the, from the, the canal and all that, all the specimens came back positive for Siakness. Yes. Is there any case to suspect the people, I mean the patients, who uh, maybe develop uh, this infection from the others? So to give prophylactic some kind of antibiotics? Uh, this is anecdotal. I can't, it's no science, yes. okay? I have a uh, if I have a patient that come to me with a painful shoulder replacement, I put the patient on the double drug yes. for two weeks. Yes. And I ask the patient to come back. And if the patient come back and he feels better, <coughs> that's another, you know, <laughs> yeah. sign that it might be infection. Yes, of course. But I have no signs of that. I can't write it because I'm anecdotal. Yes. Yes. No, I say before, before the operation, just in case a candidate for a shoulder arthroplasty, can you 
suspects for some reason something. All, all the patients that we, we've seen that were positive for yes. C-acnes in the joint yeah. had no signs of infection prior to surgery. Yeah. Okay. No so signs. In any case, I think I, there's a paper about doxic, doxycycline for something, prophylactic for two weeks or something like that. Do you yeah. have any... It's a good idea. I don't know. I, I'm not okay. using it, but okay. it's a... I think, Buddy, my, you, you my mentioned My question it. is about yeah. antibiotics, and maybe you answered it now, but yeah. uh, I wonder if you always use rifampicin, because I don't think it's very strong evidence for that either. I agree no, no, in, in the infected ones. I agree yeah. that you should use two types. Yeah. But no. do you the al always yeah. use rifampicin, yeah. the others as well? Always? Yeah, for C. acnes, yeah. 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 yeah, but not for C. acnes, but for an infection in the shoulder before no. you know. And no. 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 Oh, no. No, well, it depends on the bug. If you know the bug, you tell a specific for the bug. Yeah. If you don't know what the bug is and you suspect C. acnes, or you know it's C. acnes, you must... And you always use it. Yeah, and if it's a bug that creates biofilm, I use the rifampicin. You must use it because otherwise it, it, it protects itself uh, uh, with a biofilm and, and any antibiotic will not work. Yes, you're very categorical, but other people are disagree with you. <laughs> that you have to use it. Okay. <laughs> That's nothing new. I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying my, my stuff very uh, loud and all that, but you know. But, but you know but take it or leave it, you know? Actually, rifampicin. <laughs> okay. Can I ask also Dr. Ferusis, uh, for practical reasons, what about uh, the change? Is you prefer to revise an anatomic uh, stem or just to change? What is better for you? What you, you prefer? What do you mean the conversion? The conversion, exactly. My question to Professor. Uh, you, you mean that uh, 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 because we platform know the stem? Is, yes, yes, exactly. I have never uh, uh, convert a stem. Yes. It's in most of the cases, <laughs> it's not possible. Okay. Either to the height, mainly to the height. So, so and there, you have to revise it. Yes, this is a meaning. I mean, a message also for the companies. For the it industry. is. I mean, I think. I think all this uh, conversion is is. It's a nice gimmick, but yes. in most of the yes. cases, most of the cases, yes. it doesn't work. All right. Very limited. I know that Alex managed to do it. This is not true. I, I know that yeah. you managed yeah. to do yeah. it. Correct, depending correct. The system that you use. Correct. Okay. Correct. Correct, but, right. but uh, you know, in, this, is, this is when the first surgeon got it right. Yeah. Yeah. But when the first surgeon got it wrong, it doesn't matter, you have to, you know. So, yeah. gentlemen, thank you very much for your participation, for the talk. Oh, so, uh, the last one, yes, yeah. please. Uh, my question to offer regarding the approach, as you showed us, like, uh, anterior super approach and the McKinsey approach, but I think that you must be using the delta pectoral approach for your fracture cases and your revision cases also. No, I, I, for the fracture cases, I use the same approach, because okay. you can work from this window and do everything, again, for the fracture cases, I have to use a stem, but I can get into the, to the shaft from the top, and I, I use the thinnest uh, stem that I need, because I use it cement cementless with bone impaction, the same. For revision cases, I um, sometimes have to think whether I need to do a double approach. So usually the cases that are referred to me with a stemmed implant were done through a delta pectoral approach. So what I do is I use the skin incision okay. that they had, and I extend it superiorly, like a saber cut, take the subcutaneous to the side and go, through. And, and go do outro superior approach. If I'm unlucky to get it out, I close this and I go through a delta pectoral approach. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, please, we're done. Maybe later on with the coffee or at the supper. <laughs> Thank you very much.